Hello, my name is Doug Calderwood. I am currently a senior in the Diversified Ag program here at Vermont Technical College. And today I'm going to be talking about why VTC Farm should install a sand separator at the current farm facility. A um, little bit about the farm. The farm is currently milking 90 animals. Um, they raise all their own livestock, do all their own cropping. Um, basically, do, the, the, the farm does everything for itself. This includes um, moving the manure off the farm. The current system is a liquid system. The manure is pumped out of the barn into a lagoon where it is stored until such time as it can be uh, applied to the field. The farm currently uses sand as a bedding source uh, due to the fact that sand is, very, is a very good source of bedding uh, due to the fact that it is very cheap, uh, is inorganic, meaning that it won't grow any bacteria. This is the biggest reason that the farm uses it is that there is very low incidence of disease at the farm due to the fact that they are using sand. However, uh, sand is a very, very difficult to uh, handle in a manure handling system. It settles out of suspension, it is very hard on equipment due to its abrasive, almost sandpaper quality, and can just make a real nightmare when trying to handle through an improperly designed system. VTC's farms manure handling system is improperly designed. The system was designed to originally handle sawdust, however they have switched over to sand and in the future they are not going to be switching back to sawdust due to the fact that there are so many benefits to sand which I'm not going to be going into right now. Um, so because they use sand they have a lot of problems. One is the wear on equipment. The farm as I said moves all their manure themselves. Because they do this all that sand is going through all of their equipment. They pump the sand-laden manure out of the pit into a, uh, into a uh, tank, which then spreads it on the field. Both that pump and that tank receive a lot of sand going through them, which wears them out a lot. Um, second, the cost of hauling. Because their sand is in the manure, there's a larger amount of material that has to be hauled. This means more trips back and forth from the field to the pit, increasing your hauling cost the amount of time you're spending out there. And finally, loss savings on bedding. Because the bedding is going right into the pit and onto the sand, rather than being reclaimed as I'm going to propose, the farm is losing a significant amount of money uh, through spreading this sand on the field. So my solution that, I'm going, that I am proposing is to install a sand separator at the farm and to basically take sand out of the picture in the manure handling system uh, after the, the sand laden manure goes through this sand separator after leaving the barn. So as I mentioned, there's a considerable amount of wear on the equipment. Uh, the farm only has one manure pump and one tank. They both involve a lot of moving parts. The bearings in both of these pieces of equipment commonly wear out the flightings around the impellers as well also wear out due to the fact that the sand is being pushed around in a circle, up a tube, whatever it is. Uh, the sand just rubs and rubs and rubs and just wears stuff out uh, in a similar fashion as sand would if you, or sandpaper would if you rubbed it repeatedly over a piece of wood, for instance. The farm is current, it also has a lot of breakdowns. Uh, they blow a barren on the manure pump. Tomorrow it's going to rain, that means that they lost a whole day of spreading and now their manure pit could be running over. This is a big problem with many farms, this is a, a pollution issue, no farmer wants to be involved in this. When you need to spread manure, you want your equipment working right and you don't want to be causing yourself more headaches than you need by putting something through your equipment that's going to make it break sooner. Uh, that's why I think taking the sand out of the picture completely and out of the lagoon completely is the way to go at VTC. The farm is currently spending over um, $2,500 repairing this equipment and that's not including the time that somebody has to spend their turning a wrench. This is just the parts that they buy uh, to replace what's broken. Um, and it is, you know, the cost of labor is even higher. You know, $60 an hour to have somebody sit there and turn a wrench, that adds up real quick. And then you're also not talking the loss, loss of uh, maybe getting fined for having a pollution because you couldn't spread one day and then for the next week it rained so your pit ran over. Uh, and that can be a very big fine if that were to happen. 
Second is the hauling cost, and I'm not just talking about the cost for VTC hauling it. Uh, because the sand is put into the lagoon, uh, it does settle out. Sand is about 10 times or more heavier than water. Therefore, it settles out of suspension and doesn't just go right up the pipe of the manure pump. It just sits on the bottom of the pit. This mean, the, the farm is currently has tried to stir it back up into suspension and will spend upwards of a day stirring it. However, you're talking about a foot to two feet of sand, sometimes at the end of the year, even four feet of sand on the bottom of the pit. That amount of sand does not stir back up, and you're running it all through your equipment, just wearing it out even more. Another issue is that the farm does not have the ability to go in at the end of the year and dig this out, due to the fact that they don't have the right equipment. Um, the only way to get it out is to go in at the end of the year and dig it out, which is what they have been doing, but they have had the resource to hiring somebody else to do it. This is sort of a pain for the farm due to the fact that they have free labor, theoretically, with uh, student labor. Um, so they are having to spend close to $3,500 yearly having somebody come in and spread their manure for them. This cost could be a lot less or could be just every four years if they were to install this sand separator and remove the sand from the pit and not to have it ever go in the pit to begin with. The final major cost to the farm is the loss of savings on uh, reclaiming the, the sand and reusing it as bedding. The farm currently spends about $270 a week on buying tr a truckload of sand to put in the barn. They have to buy this every week as that is the rate that the sand leaves the barn um, due to just everyday use of the facilities. All of this sand currently goes into the pit goes into the, is pumped up through the uh, manure pump, into the manure tank, spread on the fields, and gone. However, if they were to install a sand separator, the farm would be able to reuse this bedding four, five, ten times uh, and get more life out of it and reduce that $260, $270 cost will be spread out and reused um, a lot more. Um, I'm not saying that they won't have to buy bedding, there will be a little bit lost over a year through the separator into the pit. However, it will be a lot less than a truckload a week. Uh, it might be two or three truckloads a year. Uh, therefore, that is a huge savings, um, being able to not have to spend that $270 a week on sand that they currently are spending. So the solution to this, I believe, is to move the sand laden manure out of the barn and directly into a sand separator separating the sand out of the manure and eliminating the sand from the rest of the, ma the manure hauling system at the farm. Um, I wouldn't change anything to the system after the sand separator. I would just install this between the barn and the lagoon that is currently in place. So, how does a sand separator work? It's a very simple piece of equipment. It basically squeezes the sand laden manure, squeezing the sand and some of the manure out and then pushing the water to the other side to then go to the pit. The sand is then washed uh, to get rid of all of the manure and other organic matter that's not sand. And this is where some of the sand can be lost and is lost, but it's not a significant amount. Uh, this sand, as I said, is washed and then is sent to a facility for storage. This facility would sit right beside the separator. Very simple design, just a cement pad with a roof over it to keep it dry. The sand would sit there for about one to two months, dry out, let the water get out of it that's in it. It wouldn't be much, but it would be a little bit. And then that sand can be put back into the barn. So what's this going to cost? Sand separator, the one I've been looking at that will be able to handle the amount of manure that BTC produces in a day, would be about $500,000. Uh, the building would be another $50,000, and that's a really high figure for a building. Um, that could easily be $25,000, no problem. So this piece of equipment wouldn't require a whole lot of installation. Uh, cement pad to go underneath it. Uh, it's a self-contained unit. We'd need a power hookup, but there's plenty of power at the farm already. And then just building a separate building for the storage of the sand. And as far as running it and maintenance, they're fairly maintenance free. Uh, they're designed for handling this type of uh, uh, material, the sand, the abrasiveness of it. They are made out of high, high grade steel. That means that they wear out less quickly. Uh, this is dif uh, different from the current piece of equipment the farm is using, which are not made of high grade steel and wear out quickly. 
uh, unlike this piece of equipment, which, which would just last for years and years and years. Um, they're designed, as I said, they're designed to handle this. All the bearings are sealed on them. The flighting on all the augers is very, very tough and would require, re require maybe an hour's worth of work a week just to grease it, check it over, and do basic maintenance uh, that, that needs to be done to it to keep it running. However, this is going to decrease your maintenance cost on the other end with your other manure handling equipment. What somebody might spend, let's say, five hours a week on the manure handling equipment, such as the spreader and the pump, they're not going to have to spend any time on that now. So you're taking five hours a week and going to one hour a week. That's a big savings right there when somebody's time is worth $60 an hour. The other savings, and not just labor at the farm, is a decrease in hauling and equipment costs. As I said, they wouldn't be spending as much time repairing equipment. This also means they wouldn't have to be buying as many parts for the equipment. So that would be saving that cost of $2,500 that they're currently spending to replace worn out parts on their manure pump and manure spreader. They would also have the, the savings of hauling costs. They would have to go in and clean out the pit every five years. Uh, these sand separators are not 100%. They do lose about 2% of the sand through the system on an annual basis. So that means over time the sand will build up in the, the manure handling uh, lagoon that the farm currently has and would have to be dug out every five years, I would imagine. They would also be able to save $12,870 on sand purchases. Because the farm would not have to be purchasing that uh, $270 a week, they, could, um, they would not have that cost at all because they are putting the sand that's coming out of the barn back into the barn a month later. This is a huge savings. Um, overall, the farm would be saving $18,870 a year just on the cost of spreading the sand, the equipment repairs, and the sand purchases. Now, this versus $550,000 to install the system. Uh, that seems like a very, you know, two different numbers. Uh, one's really big, one's really small. However, this isn't including the amount of time spent dealing with the headaches that the current manure handling system has of getting the sand out of the barn to the pit, uh, fixing the equipment, and just then having to go back in, dig the pit out late, at a later date, and just all those uh, added costs of basic just um, labor to keep the current manure handling system running. You're decreasing you know, 20 to 30 hours easily. A full-time job is, is basically what the current manure handling system requ is requiring. Taking that full-time job and br bringing it down to one to two hours a week just to maintain uh, the sand separator and to um, continue with basic upkeep of the current man manure handling equipment. Now you might ask, you know, you're saying one hour of work extra a week. What about handling that sand after it's off the separator? Well, the farm currently is already bringing that sand from the parking lot where it is dumped on a weekly basis, twice weekly actually, and it bringing it into the barn. So all that would be is just basically retraining students to go to a different location and haul the sand into the barn as bedding would not take a whole lot. That cost is not changing. The labor is not changing. Now, what type of, um, of learning or extra skill does it take to maintain this sand separator? Not a lot. Uh, as I said earlier, I believe it's just basically greasing it, looking it over, making sure nothing's wearing out, uh, just following a basic checklist. Any Joe Schmo could do it. Um, and just keeping the equipment running, uh, very basic, basic uh, need there. So this here is the budget. As I said, $550,000 total for the construction um, with getting a building, with getting a building and um, getting the sand separator. Um, and then a cost of about $1,000 uh, yearly with electricity and maintenance. Um, I just put maintenance in there. It's really not going to be that high. Uh, nothing is going to wear out on that sucker for at least 10 years. Um, it might just be a couple tubes of grease. That might that'd be it. Um, and the electricity, just what it takes to turn the couple of small motors that are on it. Um, and then the savings of $3,500 on spreading sand, $2,500 on equipment repairs, 
$12,864 on uh, having to purchase sand. Uh, that leads you to a savings of $18,870, as I said before. Uh, and as I said before, this is small compared to you know $650,000. But there are a lot of unforeseen savings here in labor that I just cannot um, calculate at the moment due to the fact that we don't really know how many um, hours are currently spent. Um, but we can get a very good ballpark idea, as I have said before. You know, it's a full-time job to keep that system running and you could take it down to two hours a week very easily, which would then be able to free up time um, of that employee that's already there uh, to do other things, uh, maintain other equipment, uh, look at the animals. Animal health is a you know, huge thing on all farms and just free up that person to go about and do other jobs that may be more important uh, to the well-being of the animals, but are overlooked due to the fact that the farm has to move that sand out of the facility. I also did not mention the savings of having to, uh, well I did mention the savings of not getting in trouble with uh, the Vermont Agency of Ag or the National Resource Conservation Service for getting any types of fines for uh, point source pollution such as the pit running over. Due to the fact that the sand is going into the pit, there's about four feet of sand in the pit, the pit was not originally designed to handle this much waste, therefore the pit does get very full in the spring and has been known to overflow in the past. Uh, by removing this sand, you're decreasing, you're taking away four feet of material in that pit that's increasing the amount of storage capacity you have, meaning that you have less likelihood of running over, less likelihood of getting a fine, uh, and also gives you more flexibility in when you have to spread. You're not always rushing, oh my gosh, my pit's gonna run over, my pit's gonna run over. Uh, now you're like, oh, I got another foot left, it's a good day, why don't we spread a little bit of manure? So it just gives you, um, you, know, you know, the savings here, the unforeseen savings, and it also gives you a peace of mind of just knowing that, you know, what's the sand gonna wear out today for a piece of equipment, and when is my manure pit gonna run over? It takes away those headaches and just makes, you know, farming a lot easier, which it isn't very easy right now. So, as I've said, uh, decrease costs, you decrease your wear on equipment, and as I just stated, decrease your headaches. Um, I believe that the uh, sand separator would be very good for the farm. I don't want to see the farm change away from sand at all in its bedding, uh, bedding usage right now. Um, switching to sawdust I don't believe would be a good idea for the farm. I think it'll increase the amount of cases of mastitis, infections of the udder, and just decrease animal health if they were to switch to that. Uh, there has been mention of installing a methane digester. I do think this is a great piece of equipment. I don't think it's right for the farm. Uh, if there is some way that they could get a methane digester to work while keeping sand in the freestall, then that would be a possibility. But taking away sand would not be a good idea for the VTC farm, and it's just going to decrease the livelihood and the the, pr pr product, the productive level that it can achieve and just make it much harder for animals to live there and for the farm to be profitable. So thank you for your time and if you have any questions um, please feel free to ask. Thank you.